Joe, Joe, talk to me about what is it that needs to be done in Zimbabwe to uh, give a boost to film, filmmaking? I think, think for one, uh, people need to realize the power that film has. I'll, I'll speak from a national level, like from a government level, where they need to realize that film, like look at what, what's happening right now. Hook Off is on Netflix. Mm. It's being shown everywhere in the world. Mm. And that's the representation of Zimbabwe that's on right now. Mm. And they had no control over that because they didn't even participate in that. But imagine if they did. Imagine if they were like, oh, one of the scenes, one of the scenes, let it be in Victoria Falls. And that's pushing Victoria Falls, that's pushing tourism. Mm. Film has so much power. And like, so there's no support at all from a government policy level, right? And then coming to corporate, like Tom is right, talking about Dr. Trouble. Mm. Like there's brand placement, like product placement in films. Like Heineken, I remember reading this one time, Heineken made a, a billion dollars profit more. Yeah, it was in Skyfall because James Bond just took, took a bottle and drank. They had so many sales just because of that. So the, the power we have that they can believe and we can work together by pushing each other. Because we, do, we did this with no money at all, with no support at all. Mm. So we need support. We need to realize that it's not, look at it like sponsorship, but it's, 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 it's like a partnership. Mm. Mm. And we can push each other together. Mm. Tendaisha, do you want to jump in on that? What, what ought to be done to uh, give a, a boost to filmmaking in Zimbabwe from where you're sitting out in Johannesburg? Oh yeah, definitely. I totally agree with what Joe is saying. Um, and just to add, I actually wrote my master's thesis. I, I don't know if Joe and Tom have read my thesis yet. <laughs> <laughs> this is I did, did this much for them to read, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but it was basically exactly about that, about how filmmaking can be a tool to build the national brand of Zimbabwe. And because I believe that we don't actually have enough research that, um, that supports what we're trying to do as filmmakers. Exactly what Joe said. I just I wish we could have more research around that, so that when we when we approach um, uh, the parliament or whoever does the policies, to actually give them evidence. And I'm I'm sure Cookoff is like it's not like I see. I was I was I was ahead of y'all. I used Cookoff as a case study. Now it is actually a case study, guys. Um, so we could use Cookoff as an example, like what what Joy is saying about how it's now on Netflix. We see the numbers, we see the exposure. That's that's possible. Um, so more research is important so that we can have solid facts we can present to parliament so that you know legislation can change. Mm. Also, um, we just need, I think that could be a great, a great um, place to start. But in general, there is a lot of structure that needs to be, to be put in place to protect artists and, uh, and creatives so that, so that they can build a proper careers in the industry. Mm. Uh, without structures, without um, these legislations and everything, people will just keep doing hobbies. Mm. Uh, but that's not going to work because what we really need is structure that people can build on. And also, when young people look at careers in, in the filmmaking industry, they will be like, oh, yeah, actually, I know exactly what to do. I struggled a lot because after school, I didn't know where to start. You know, I was literally winging it the whole, entire way. But if there are more structures and more organizations that are supporting young filmmakers, young artists, and kind of helping them build their careers properly, that would be fantastic. And I mean, looking at South Africa, um, South Africa does a very good job. There are so many organizations, got, some of them are government owned, some of them are not, but they help artists to find their way. And also they fund artists and creatives. They, they have caught on this vision of using um, making and creative story, storytelling to, to sell South Africa to the world and they do a really good job at it. Um, so if we could kind of copy those kinds of examples would I think would be way on our way. Um, yeah I think that's where I'll stop for now. <laughs> and, I, and anything that you want to add on that? What to do to improve the environment uh, and give a boost to filmmaking, which, uh, as Tendaiyeshe has just said right now, it's, it's a product that provides a window into the country. Uh, it could lure tourists into the country. It's a, it's a job creator. Uh, what, what's your what's your addition to what uh, Tendaiyeshe and Joe have just said? I would probably say, like, you know, starting um, in, in the homes, you know, and just how we how we treat and kind of view 
creatives across the board. I mean, film specifically for this conversation, but you know, it, um, it, it goes such a long way to be able to see that, okay, if I get into film, there is some kind of a, a, a roadmap and runway there. But before you even get out there and say, I want to be an actor or any kind of artist, you know, in our homes, in our schools, that kind of societal encouragement, like, go ahead and do it. That's valid as well. I think in our society, there's, um, there's, a, there's a pretty big stigma around, you know, um, choosing a, a, a career in the creative industries. And, um, and I think, you know, it all feeds into what Tendi uh, is saying and what Joe has said. Without those structures, without those higher level policy decisions, no one, including, you know, parents and relatives in general can see that, you know what, if we let this kid go ahead and do this, it's going to bring about something meaningful, meaningful beyond just following a passion or following a dream, but mm. actually a career that can sustain them and sustain them. Mm. Yep.